first of all, thank you very much for for having me because, uh, as I said, you know, it's it's really a teamwork that's going to get us somewhere around the world uh, for this uh, tragedy, which is you know absolute an absolute tragedy around the world because we see the curves of uh, cancer how it explodes. So my story, uh, to make it as 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 short as possible. Um, you know, I was um, I was a sports uh, guy. I was uh, I was flying my airplanes around the world, and uh, I, um, I I I had uh, I was diagnosed. Well, I was diagnosed. I had kidney cancer, like, sort of explosive way, <laughs> in an explosive way, because um, I I just you know went to do we like everyone else uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon. It it, it just came out red. I, I call it red fluo. Um, a little bit of urine in the blood, uh, you know, I would call it that way. And uh, immediately, 10, 10 minutes after, I had the sharp pains around the kidney, uh, the left kidney. So I managed to drive, uh, swirling a bit, you know, on the, on the road and uh, to the nearest clinic. And they operated on me within 36 hours uh, urgently. I had a seven centimeter tumor. Um, and uh, 6.9 exactly, um, and they uh, cleared the tumor plus the kidney, and uh, yeah, that that was it. And uh, we were expecting uh, metastasis within three to six months, uh, but uh, it never happened. So um, um, until about nine years later, and um, I immediately took uh, you know the whole thing. I I was a uh, Biology was my subject when I was uh, at school, especially uh, in, in high school in, in Toledo, Ohio, um, at some stage. And um, I, I followed my dad because he was a pilot. So, you know, the little kid, you know, just follows his dad and I became a pilot. But then um, as soon as I, I got this, this illness, when I woke up the next morning, I decided, you know, looking into the eyes of uh, my doctor, I said, well, listen, um, he's he's a great guy he does a wonderful job but he's not gonna save me so i started putting on you know what i thought made sense into action and you know at that time there was the early very early uh, um, uh, data from from uh, anti-angiogenesis natural uh, and so I, I just got into it, you know, right away and started cutting sugars and, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, um, it went on and it was great. And, and I, you know, during those nine years, I thought I was completely clear, like, you know, the doctor will say, you know, look, you know, five years later, look at the protocol. This is the new stuff that came out and, and yeah, you're absolutely clear. And then, yeah, nine years later, we started seeing all these metastases, you know, um, in the lung, or well, it start, started with the right lung. So I got directed to a wonderful man called uh, Professor Bernard Escudier, uh, who's, um, uh, he was the chairman uh, of ESMO, the European Society of Medical Oncology, um, for four years. And uh, he did not renew, even though, you know, most oncologists in Europe voted for him for another term. He said, uh, you know, I got too much work at Gustave Roussy. Um, and so um, um, I, I, you know, discussed the whole procedure uh, with Bernard uh, as soon as uh, I got in front of him, you know, following uh, the metastasis in the lungs. And yeah, uh, he talked about the fact that chemo wouldn't work for me anyway. In any case, so we're not even going to talk about it. And um, we, um, you know, exposed the targeted therapies, anti-angiogenic therapies, and immunotherapy uh, position. And I, you know, I was still, I was still a pilot, man. I was, uh, I was fifty-one, and I said, well, you know, there's got to be a plan B. You know, and I sort of, yeah, maybe do a little bit of surgery to gain time and uh, I'm doing my own thing and I'll tell you about it. So he said, let's see if we can. Uh, and so he directed me to one of his friends who's uh, one of the master surgeons, you know, in Paris. And so we did. And so I got my license back uh, eventually another four and a half months later and I started flying again. 
But then a year later, they were all over the place. They were only on the right side a year before, and they were like, we counted up to 26 tumors. Um, so so uh, we did, we gained some time, uh, and, and I said, let's do it again. You know, and, and yeah, he started being a little bit uh, stressed about it because, um, you know, he, usually you don't really come up and, and say, uh, listen, you know, to the, to your doctor, especially a guy of his stature, basically, because, you know, number one in Europe for kidney cancer, probably one of the top five in the world uh, for uh, uh, kidney, yeah. Um, and, and well, he, he listened to me, you know, that was wonderful. And he was smart about it. And he said, look, you know, we can, we can go again, but you know, yeah, you know, we're going to take one out in the same perimeter. You're going to have three or four, three or four months later. So, you know, it's not going to last very long. And I said, well, let's keep doing it, you know? And yeah, from, uh, the the time before like three or four five months before uh i really got myself into something i had never thought i could i could understand even though i i loved biology when i was a kid and i continued what i was doing under uh undercover uh if i can call it like this uh and and adding everything that made sense so you started you know with the with the typical nutrition uh and then of course uh, you added the uh fasting and then you added the keto approach but you know as we know now there's bad keto and good keto uh depending on on what you are and what sort of illness you are you have and perhaps uh, one, uh, the sort of cancer you have, uh, you know, we know that uh, glutamine is uh, also a, a major problem now. And uh, uh, so from the time I started, basically, the cancer uh, was actually going up, was uh, growing. Uh, and then it started to slow down. And up until uh, for about three years, we, we saw less and less, and the growing uh, got uh, weaker and weaker. And then to the point where four years ago, uh, well, for the past four years, nothing has happened. And, and it, like it's, I've got no cancer metabolism alive in me anymore. So Bernard is actually thrilled and uh, he's, he's I mean, it, it's absolutely incredible what is happening because it seems like from there on something happened. Yeah, I, I never thought I'd be there, you know, because uh, I'll tell you between 2012 and 2014, uh, I didn't look good. And uh, we had to do something. So he said to me the first thing when I said, what about surgery, you know? Uh, and he said, well, yeah, maybe we can do surgery, but you know, most chances are that's what happens with kidney cancer when it becomes metastatic. It's going to come back quickly and multiply. And the more we do that, the more you're going to have uh, metastasis growing, basically. They're going to multiply three or four times uh, in, in for one single one taken out. So it's only to gain time. Then we're going to have to do something. You know, start the treatment anti-angiogenic treatment, uh, Avastin, you know, which is the most, you know, known one because it, it got on the market, I think, in 2003. So there's a, you know, they have a, 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 a view on it for a few years already, and they know how to use it on, on a certain type of cancers. But we know, you know, today that anti-angiogenic therapies, they at most, they slow down and sort of stabilize the, the, the illness for a while, and then it, you stop responding. And for 11 years that I've been under, you know, Bernard was my oncologist. He became a very close friend, um, even went to uh, sleep over in Paris at his place, he invited me, you know, so you don't usually go and sleep at uh, your oncologist's place, you know. <laughs> and... Um, 
And uh, he became my real partner in there because we ended up on um, M6 as one of the main national channels, uh, TV channels in France. And we ended up on the on the evening, uh, uh, you know, uh, main news um, together. And and so I've been in a in the newspapers, in the magazines, uh, not only in France, but other places as well. So I'm sure that if if I am here today, the way I've done it, I'm sure there are other people who had never ever gone through through uh, treatments and and have a a cancer which is highly metastatic, uh, you know, stage four, and um, without any treatment, you know, suddenly they're all good. So it doesn't happen. So yeah, that I just want to. I just want to help as many people as I can, you know, because those, as I say, the this is those tragedies are, are just popping up. You know, we see it exploding from the ages of thirty to forty. Now the twenty to to thirty are uh, is taking exactly the same path uh, globally. So we've got to do something. I mean, you know, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's, it's tricky uh, because. Um, you know, some of the things might not fit uh, some people because we have a metabolism from one person to the other that is not the same. We have, you know, genetics, uh, epigenetics that are going to be different, and uh, and 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 the illness itself, uh, and might you might have different things on top of the cancer if you talk about cancer, uh, like uh, you know. Uh, uh, blood sugar problems, uh, thyroid problems that might prevent you from, uh, well, prevent, that wouldn't be a good plan to do some of the things I do. There are some molecules that I'm taking, obviously, that are super important that I've been studying for, uh, you know, it's every day. I'm not a fun guy. My, my wife deserves a, a medal because um, I, I am in the research, you know, in the scientific publications all the time when i say all the time it's every almost every single day and so um i got to study uh different molecules uh that you know that are known obviously that are natural and then what you call off-label drugs that actually um are being used um I can't really talk about it here, the off-label drugs, because, you know, for obvious reasons, but uh, they're, um, uh, you know, they're taken, uh, uh, you know, at, at very low doses and they don't have side effects. And uh, you see how when you use them together, this whole thing being used as a synergy, as a formidable impact, uh, obviously, because that's what we see. We see on me, but we're starting to see it on other people. And so um, on top of the mainstream, which, um, you know, obviously, I I got nothing to say about it. You know, they, as I said, you know, I've got many friends around the doctor's world and they do a wonderful job. They're being taught, you know, they, they, they're very good at what they're doing. But the thing is, you know, everyone says it, you know, in the, in, in the scientific world, you know, once you start having a cancer that is becoming metastatic, there's almost, almost never any chances of getting it, of getting through uh, this whole thing. So, so, you know, they don't have all the answers. Now, you know, Ben Iskudia was the first to say it, you know, loud and clear. Uh, and uh, it's it's important to start looking into things that might you know get someone in a better shape uh, naturally, and then obviously um, you know you got to look at the ways to have a, a you know better better response to treatment um, by doing certain things that are not going to mess around with. Um, the standard of care it's it's probably a little bit difficult for some of the people because we you know all of us and including doctors that are becoming patients more and more um we're used to a system that yeah you sit in a chair and they do it all so you do nothing and and what uh, a lot more people do it's all about you 
basically. You've got to take action. And that's not always easy, you know. I was very lucky, I think, to be directed to Bernard and Scudier. And I was thanks to uh, a very good friend who was uh, my um, uh, uh, radiologist uh, from the very start. And he knew him, you know, he knew his, um, he knew his, um, his environment as well. So that was, um, I was very lucky and, you know, cause he listened to me and he's not a, he's not the typical oncologist. He's a researcher. In fact, he was the um, very first investigator uh, a long time ago. We're talking 15, 20 years ago. Uh, to investigate uh, with an international team um, into what was going to be the first anti-angiogenic therapies uh, or, or anti-angiogenic drugs. Um, they started with um, uh, fins, uh, shark fins, because they, they, there's no, uh, as I understand, there's no blood vessels. And so um, it wasn't a great success, but anyway, that's when it started. And the funny thing is that among the team was a certain Dr. William Lee, who happens to be the uh, Angiogenesis Foundation president. Um, and uh, he, he wrote, actually, he wanted to write, well, he was, he was very happy to write um, uh, the first pages of my book, actually, William. Um, and yeah, they, they, um, they decided, you know, basically all of them to to um, listen. That was it. Uh, you know, not only him, but the others. And um, yeah, seeing the results, they had to sort of start saying, well, maybe there's something in it, you know, uh, even though we know how how this whole uh, mainstream uh, is is working, you know, with the pharmaceutical companies that, you know, you, you had to do uh, to prove something or prove uh, the efficacy of uh, a treatment. You had to go um, um, those, you know, uh, um, those those um, uh, uh, test uh, uh, different tests, double blind, you know, and it takes a long time. And it's it, you know, and this is a, everything is related to. Um, cancer being uh, uh, a genetic, um, you know, illness. And once you bring the metabolic, um, you know, uh, subject into it, then there's no more pattern to be made. And so, so there's a bit of politics as well in there, obviously, I mean, a bit, maybe a lot. Um, but I don't let myself, you know, worry. I, I don't worry about those things. I just, I just, I'm just do anything to stay alive and I do everything to help people uh, improve their condition. And eventually before they get sick, that's a major study. That's a major worry in the U S um, like, uh, you know, a lot of other places. Um, the, the major problem is that the, the youngsters are, are going early on uh, younger and younger to fast foods and all that stuff. And what you find in the fast foods and all this, this different type of foods, well, you get pesticides, um, you've got, uh, you got uh, calories and um, you got sugar. So yeah, micronutrition is not there anymore. That's why people are going, uh, are getting younger and younger. They're getting obese, um, overweight to start with. And we know that obesity and, and overweight is now the second cause of cancer worldwide. And then that uh, obesity uh, is directly re uh, responsible for 13 types of cancer and indirectly others. Uh, I have some form of autism. Uh, you know, Asperger, I was, I was a kid that uh, was messed around a bit when I was young and, uh, and uh, I think I can think uh, uh, quite fast and quickly and, and you know, in certain subjects. Uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm a bit more difficult in others, but that allowed me to basically uh, start looking um, into things that people have more difficulties when they haven't been uh, taught basically or, or uh, 
trained into uh, scientific subjects that uh, I find it quite easy to understand. Um, and um, obviously having um, made this the steps to contact all these guys uh, that I was able to, and I'm, I'm still, I, I'm, I'm constantly sharing things with them, and which is incredible because it started like uh, almost six years ago. And we're, we're like, you know, nothing as it, it's like we're seeing each other, but we don't physically. Uh, and we're sharing a lot of stuff. And when I don't understand a couple of things, I, I, I ask them and they respond. And so, um, I, you know, decided to, uh, study something that, um, would um, really uh, close different pathways to different types of cancer, especially mine, but others. Um, and um, when you study a drug or, you know, a molecule, which is a, like a supplement, um, you've got to see whether they can um, interfere uh, with others or uh, on the contrary, play a role in, in, in synergy with the others. And that's what I've done for every single one, including the off-label drug um, drugs. And and so there are a lot of stuff, you know. I mean, I can cite one. You know, melatonin is, is absolutely incredible. Um, when you when you read um, all the scientific publications on when you know, you know, how you rate a scientist, you know, um, and and when when you know that Russell Reiter has like sixteen hundred publications just on a subject is absolutely incredible and so you know <laughs> no wonder that people who start adding little things like that, that don't have any side effects because they've been studying for over 50 years and so many papers so many publications it, what is important is that uh, my doctor knows exactly what i'm doing and i'm not hiding anything from him nothing and it makes it easy because he understands he listens he doesn't judge, uh, which is a big problem for a lot of patients. You know, when I find myself sitting here in front of a, uh, uh, in front of twenty three doctors uh, on Zoom uh, on, upon their request, uh, they're the ones who request uh, because they're starting to be to be quite um, quite anxious about the situation because you know thirty forty years ago there weren't that many were sick and now you've got you know one out of two people uh cancer in their existence you know it touches everyone doctor or not doctors why are we still having so many people dying from cancer you know and that's what the the doctors realize now that they weren't too cluey about it and they they see their families being touched themselves and and they're not they're dying as well so it's a big big worry now that's that's not me talking that's their message to me so i'm yeah. only repeating yeah. what they're saying like privately uh i had the uh number one worldwide uh researcher she's a clinician as well she hasn't seen patients for uh many years uh, her name is lauren zitvogel she's the number one researcher in um in immunology, uh, microbiome in oncology. And so she has a very specific um, team uh, at Gustave Roussy. And, um, uh, you know, they're all from different nationalities. And they wanted to see me and we discussed the whole thing. And they found out that, you know, testing me that I had a microbiome that was uh, very, very anti-inflammatory, like they didn't see before. And the last two at, on the third page uh, uh, bacteria were unknown uh, in the humankind. So that was uh, that was absolutely incredible. So she asked me to come on board because she started this whole thing on Cobion, uh, which is eight countries in Europe. Uh, I think it's 16 partners now. Um, and this this program is um, what what is what's the latest basically coming uh, in immunity um, for self immunity and also immunity to help to respond to treatments. So she said, "You got to be part of that." And um, I'm the 
expert patient, as they called me. I mean, it makes me laugh a bit, but uh, I'm just a natural, normal guy, a surfer since the age of nine, you know, a rugby guy. So very uh, down to earth. And uh, I've been contacted by, by you know, this, this uh, advanced research team to do a, a letter uh, to, to sponsor them because um, uh, they started a new protocol with um, uh, with um, uh, kidney cancer because you have to start somewhere. And that was, it's the first time ever in the world that a major cancer center uh, has a protocol, uh, standard uh, nutrition versus uh, uh, keto nutrition um, um, and doing immunotherapy. So it, it's part of the oncobiome. If you look at it closely, it's it's called keto, uh, keto kidney, keto rein in French. Um, and um, yeah, it's 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 amazing that uh, they've asked me to take part in it. I had to sign a document uh, so that you know, uh, uh, preventing me from spilling out some information from these um, uh, from these uh, um, uh, uh, meetings because obviously that that is very new, and so uh, people would you know might just get desperate and then jump on things that uh, they're half known half uh, not even proven so that would be dangerous and so but yeah as i said i'm very privileged to to uh, sit around them and some of them are, have, have told me you know you're the only guy on the planet that we know who uh is you know still alive and and kicking you know without uh, without any illness at the moment, without any treatment ever. But, you know, whatever I can bring, then I'm happy to because I can't, um, I cannot not share uh, so that people, you know, benef benefit from it. And so I'm so privileged to be part of a group of, of wonderful researchers that just think outside the box because that's what they do they are absolutely mainstream but they think outside the box so um yeah from there on you know i started having five years ago i started responding to three or four people i was a little bit uncomfortable about it so i asked bernard you know i said hey, what do you think about it and he said oh no you bring things that we don't know about so um, yes, do it, you know, help them out, you know, just like uh, don't get involved with uh, the uh, the mainstream stuff, obviously not because I'm not a doctor, I don't know anything about this whole thing, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not interested, I just, what is metabolism? Metabolism is not taught in um, the, uh, uh, um, the medicine program, basically, uh, anywhere on the planet. Well, at least our world, our modern world, so-called modern world. Um, and so, yeah, I started answering, um, you know, I realized that March last year, just about a year ago, uh, my wife and I stopped counting, but uh, I've, we had helped over 5,000 people. And today, you know, I'll probably another 500. So I'm more between five, five and 6,000 today. And it, it just keeps going. It just keeps going from everywhere. Australia, uh, you know, South Africa, India, it, all the places, America, Canada, that it just comes from everywhere. And so there's a huge demand from people who absolutely want to be able to take um, action to um, be um, a, a real actor of um our own or their own uh, future illness and, and health, in basically a health state. So that's, yeah, that's the story really uh, that got me here today in front of you <laughs> and in good shape, like I say in my book. I don't know if you heard of my book. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've got this book here, um, Flying Against the Odds. Uh, that uh, I could have put a lot of science into there, but I decided to write it so that, uh, first of all, Amazon is fantastic because it delivers everywhere around the world. And I'm a citizen of the world. I've lived in a few countries. I've got uh, a a friends all over. And sometimes people who don't have enough money to buy even a couple of boxes of aspirin. So I thought 
how would I share this information, simple stuff, to position myself at the very level of everyone? Um, and, and so that to show there's a plan and that uh, it's not a death sentence. And uh, so that's what my wife and I decided to do. My wife's English. She's a, she's a wonderful writer as well. Um, and, and yeah, she, it's my book, but it's really her that, that actually had the talent uh, to write. I, 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 you know, I told the story basically. Before we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to, uh, to, to say? Any questions that I didn't ask at all? Brad, other than you doing just a hell of a beautiful job, you know, and, and uh, with Maggie, uh, I, I read Maggie's story, you know, I was very, very touched, uh, obviously. Uh, 11 years later, you know, um, a guy, that was the thing that triggered this whole thing, really, that most important thing, is that Bernard told me 11 years ago, someone who has cancer from the kidney, primary tumor, and becomes metastatic, everyone, there's no exception, dies from his cancer. So five years is really three to five years is the general, you know, uh, uh, life extension, basically. And then people sort of tend to go. Uh, with multiple treatments. Today, I'm 11 years later, no treatment whatsoever, nothing. So, and what is, that's the next step. Um, I've been helping some people and we, we now write down everything that is happening and we see people following the same curve I am. They have no treatment, some have but the ones I'm talking about have no treatments. And somehow things are starting to slow down and completely stop. And they're doing exactly the program. Um, the, main, the main thing is that we find uh, ways of, um, of um, uh, you know, uh, getting the immunity uh, of people high up, you know, um, you know, in an everyday basis. And that uh, that immunity um, starts um, playing a role in in you know better responding to the new treatments. Obviously, immunotherapy was you know started six years ago about three uh, percent you know uh, um, positive results. When I say positive results, it's like three to five years, and then you know it's it's not working anymore. Um, so there's they've made a huge jump uh, from three to fifteen to twenty percent today but only on, on, on very um, uh, uh, small uh, kind of cancers. Um, and so that's there's, there's, why there's, there's a huge um, uh, attention to uh, details on, on microbiome, which ones, you know, obviously, Achemensia, Mycinifila, Vericol, Microbia, uh, Bifidobacterium, Lactis, Lactobacillus, uh, Fumicutes. Those are, are super important uh, bacteria that, uh, people don't have a clue how often how to to bring back because we know that um, you know all these people having treatments. You should really never have uh, 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 antibiotic treatments before, um, and and you know the chemotherapies are killing some of the major bacteria. So you've got to do something every day to sort of, okay, they're going out, you got to put it, you know, make make sure that they, you know, you bring them in. And, and sometimes some of those bacteria don't have uh, uh, probiotics at all. But then we know, I've known, I've learned uh, how to really uh, incense those those um, uh, uh, bacteria families you know there are things like uh, ficoidan japonica like phycocyanin phycocyanin is absolutely incredible um but people don't know about it you know there's um those those are the things i mean it's not the only thing um but it's it's part of a like a, a protocol that i've put together it's helping a lot of people. We've got uh, we've got so many amazing response from different parts of the world because I've put it into a language that everyone can can read, and uh, you know it will make people laugh, people cry, uh, because it's all about it. It's it's all human. We're 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 part of a human chain, and that's that's how we 
that's how this thing should go forward really that's so well said that's we feel the same way never ever stop what you're doing well There's thank you so much <laughs> this is a change of habits taking the whole thing into your own hands um and that with a plan that it's teamwork among the families because what we see um uh, among the families is that if everyone's not on the same page then the person is going to uh, have to spend energy uh, to try to, you know, uh, get everybody happy among their own families. And, and while they are the ones who are really suffering physically and mentally uh, while fighting against the illness. So Tom, like other people, are them a plan, but then they've got to use that plan. And we can teach them, but it, we can't do it for them. The oncologist, you know, he's they've got to come on board. Uh, and that's a message from the very high, uh, you know, uh, uh, oncologist around the world. Um, you know, I've interviewed, I saw, I, saw, I saw you've interviewed Jethro Hugh. He's amazing. And, I, and I've also interviewed uh, Chris Smith. Uh, He's a um, neurosurgical oncologist. He's one of the top guys in the U.S., maybe five top, uh, first five in the U.S., a Baron uh, Neurological Institute. And he told me his wife, who's a nutrition specialist, uh, she, seeing that he, he specializes in uh, gliomas, now that he uses he incorporates metabolic therapies and his wife is now helping him with his patients because he says it's day and night. We've got people, you know, that came from his own father who died from a glioblastoma. And so he's totally focused on using the metabolic therapies into this whole thing. He's an oncologist, he's a surgeon, and he's got his wife working as teamwork in our special specializing in looking after the patients it's wonderful please look <laughs> after yourselves guys uh, you, uh, all right thank you that's a wonderful job don't never stop 